Okay, this is the MAT 140 video lesson number two, Linear Equations, Revenue, Costs, and Profits. The question says, Revenue and cost. A company distributes college logo sweatshirts and sells them for $45 each. A total cost function, the total cost function is linear, and the total cost for 100 sweatshirts is $4,500, while total cost for 250 sweatshirts is $8,500. Question A says, write the equation for the revenue function. Well, the revenue function would just be, it would just be R of X equal 45X because it's $45 per shirt, per sweatshirt. So each one is $45. Multiply the number of sweatshirts X uh, by 45. We should probably say something like X is the number of sweatshirts. And now it says write the equation for the total cost. Well in order to figure out the total cost we have to use the fact that it's linear. They say linear. And uh, because it's linear we can assume that there's uh, a constant slope, that it, the equation is y equal mx plus b. Uh, and so We'll try to find the slope. We'll call it M. This is really the cost per shirt. So we, we're given uh, 100 shirts is $4,500, and 250 sweatshirts is $8,500. So we can find the cost per shirt by just uh, finding rise over run or slope. So let's let's. It doesn't really matter what order. I'm going to do 8,500 minus 4,500. That's the difference in costs between these two different um, totals. So it doesn't matter what order, but it does matter that you stay in the same order on the top and the bottom. So the 8,500 goes with 250 shirts. The 4,500 cost, that was with 100 sweatshirts. So this is an increase of $4,000 over an interval of 150 shirts. So that's $26 rounding off. Uh, to the nearest uh, penny, uh, that's $26.67 per shirt. That's um, their cost. That's kind of the, the cost to the distributor. Um, yep. And then, well, we also are given, um, well, we actually, we need to get the actual cost equation, so we could use either of these points. Basically, I could have written here that we have the point uh, 250, but that production level, or uh, you know, level of purchase, 250 shirts, the cost was 8,500. That's one point that I have. Another point that I'm working with is the uh, 100 shirts costs $4,500. And so all I'm really doing is getting the equation between the, the the line, the equation of the line that connects these two points. And I could use either of these. I think a nice way to do this one is to say that the cost would have the uh, form of some slope plus some, you could call it cost, uh, initial cost of zero shirt. So that's what I'll, I'll say C0 is cost of uh, ordering no shirts at all, no sweatshirts at all. So. And so the other thing that I need to get is, is that um, what would what would generally be called the y-intercept, and here it's like a, it's actually the cost intercept. It's the cost of zero number of shirts. So again, I could use either point. I'm going to use let's say the 4,500. I know that the cost is 4,500. I know that the slope is 26.67. The cost would be 4,500 when x is 100. And that leaves me with only one variable now in the equation, so we can solve for C0. So 4,500 is 26.67 when you multiply the 100 plus this uh, fixed cost. So subtracting 26.67 from both sides, I'm going to get 18.33 as the value for C0. That means I can now write the cost function cost function would be 2667x plus the 1833. Uh, you could check it by plugging in 100 and 250 and it see if it matches those um, costs that we were given in the question. And um, 
fact, let's let's try to do that. So um, if I go to the calculator and go to the Y editor, clear out this other stuff that I still have there. And actually, this is in the wrong mode. So I need to put it back in function mode. Most people always have it in function mode. I was doing parametric equations last. So when I go to the Y editor, it looks like this. And I'm going to type in that function that I just found. So that was 26.67x plus the 1833. And one thing that's useful here uh, in this situation particularly would be to do now I've typed in both the cost function as y1 and the revenue function as y2. And um, a nice thing that you can do, if you go on the calculator, you, you do um, table set second, the, hit the second button, and then table set, and put it on ask. If you have it on ask, then when you go to the table, you can type in values, like I typed in 0 and 100, and actually here I'm, I can see what the cost is and what the revenue is. Uh, both of them are graphed for me, because I have both of those functions entered in, in the Y editor. And then, you know, for example, I could type in 300 and see what the cost and the revenue is at each of these um, sales levels. Now, I went to the window and already set up. I knew that we had uh, sales from 100 shirts to maybe 250, so I set the maximum for my window at 300. And the X scale is the spacing between the uh, hash marks in the graph. And then I put um, the minimum um, sales amount at zero and the maximum at 10,000 and counted by 1,000 in the graph. So I can see the point where the two lines cross, and I can see the, the break-even point then is actually at uh, sales level of 100 with 4,500 in costs and 4,500 in revenue. So that's what we figured out, that the break-even point for the distributor is 100 sweatshirts. Selling 100 sweatshirts means the revenue is 4,500 and the cost is 4,500 also. Now the last part of the question is find, uh, graph the revenue and cost functions and label the loss and profit regions. Label both axes in the graph and label the break-even point in the graph. And we'll use Desmos because, um, well, with Desmos we can we can print out a nice graph that you can submit as a homework assignment. You wouldn't have the computer during a test. During a test, uh, you'd have just the calculator and you could sketch things um, by hand from looking at the calculator. But for an assignment that you turn in, you can do a nice professional graph from the computer. So that's what I'd like to try. So we'll go to Desmos. At, OK, so here we are at Desmos.com. And obviously, let me say, before you hit that big red button that says Start Graphing, notice down here, LearnDesmos.com. Hit that uh, Learn More, and you've got a whole bunch of information here to help you learn how to use it. Um, for example, the graphing calculator, there's some videos here um, on how to use Desmos to do graphing and uh, other instructions on other kinds of things that, that you might do uh, even in other classes. So when we go to the start graphing, the particular example that we were working with in this lesson was uh, we had a revenue function that we found was 45x, so we can just type that in. Now, what I want you to do extra on this is to hit this little uh, brace and type x greater than, and then just type the equal right after that greater than sign. So I wanted to put that restriction in there so that because this is uh, x represents the number of sweatshirts, it wouldn't be negative. So it's a nice thing we can add in here uh, to put that restriction, and then I'll do a close brace. So you see that the graph just begins at x equals 0 and doesn't include any negative x values. So that's a nice sort of professional touch to make this uh, more, um, well, professional looking. Uh, it's more uh, accurate to what, the, it, you know, to the context. And, th and then let's put in the cost function. Uh, the cost function we had here was 26 
0.67x plus the 1833. And we'll do the same thing. The brace, x greater than or equal to 0, close brace, inner. Uh, now, I don't have that one uh, on the graph at all, right? Because the C intercept is up at 1833. So the next thing you could do is go to this little gear over here uh, and um, we'll, we'll uh, put in an appropriate window. So let's, let's start at 0. And we know that uh, it, break even point was around 100. Uh, and we had values that go up to like 250 shirt, sweatshirts. So let's go, let's go to 300 on the scale here. Um, I could put a step if I want to count by like maybe by 50, maybe 10. You know, it doesn't it, that doesn't really matter. What I also need to do here is is to have my the y value in this case is actually dollar amounts for revenue and cost, and that should begin at zero. And we knew in this particular example, for example, that if you sold 100 shirts, that was the break-even point was $4,500. So, uh, and that 250 was up to to 8,500. So, so let's put 9,000 as the um, upper limit on the scale there. We can even put in the labels here um, as it was as it suggested in the question. You you could write those in by pen with pencil on the printout, but we have the chance to do it here. Let's do that. We'll say um, what was the x value? That was the number of sh uh, sweatshirts. And the Y scale represents dollars. Now, maybe it helps to offset the picture a little bit from what I actually set so that we can actually see the axes. I think that looks better. But um, now I think, yeah, I might be able to. So obviously, that's the break even point. And you could just write it in with pencil uh, when you print this out. But I think I might be able to get that point to be labeled also. Yeah, I think that what what we could do is we we know that point. Let's type it in like this. So that if you just type in the point, then you can you can label it, and the label that I want to include is a break-even point. All right, so that looks pretty good for first uh, first graph. And uh, let's see, you could probably just print from your browser, maybe export the image, maybe you could use this to do the, the uh, printing. I'll let you work on how you want to get that uh, printed out, but that's part of the assignment is to print that out and, and then scan it and upload it into, with the rest of the assignment. All right, I think that's the end of the video.